you know an accessory is really good when you buy it twice. Sunglasses for your camera. Maybe you heard this expression before, but this isn't any type of normal sunglasses, but one that changes its intensity by simply rotating this ring. This is a pretty useful accessory or better said a must if you are filming outside or if you are vlogging or even if you are filming in a YouTube studio like mine. In this video we will talk about this accessory which is a variable ND filter and it is from Nisi and it is called the Nisi True Color Variable ND Filter and it has 1 to 5 stops of light stop. Welcome back in the studio guys, I am Flash and this right here is my second ND filter from Nisi which I've bought a few days ago and you know an accessory is really good when you buy it twice. In this video I will tell you why I've chose to buy again a Nisi filter for my cameras and also why this thing is so useful. So before we start I invite you to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss any upcoming videos on the channel. Thank you very much. So recently I've got myself a new Sigma 24-70mm f2.8 version 2 lens and this filter right here should help me maintain a shallow depth of field when filming and not only when filming but also when I'm taking photos with this camera right here. And this right here is my vlogging lens, my vlogging kit let's say and since I've got this lens, this 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8, the Nisi True Color filter never left the lens. It helps me to protect the lens if I drop the camera or if I am in a dusty environment and also it stays right here and it is ready to use anytime I wanna shoot something with this camera because I don't really like to have a lot of friction when I want to do something and if it is right here and I don't have to search for it, screw it on and things like that, it will make me shoot more and more. This is the box for the filter and inside I will show you what it comes with but let me tell you about this true color uh, sticker or badge right here and uh, it is really true color or at least it doesn't degrade as much your image which is very very important when using variable and the filters. So inside the box there's a case which is a very soft case but a bit big for storing your filter and inside the soft case there's a plastic case okay and inside the plastic case there's something more because the filter comes with two screw thingies right here I don't know how to call them but these things will screw right into the filter right into the ring and after you've screwed them uh, when the filter is mounted now you have an easier way to rotate the filter and adjust it but I don't really like using them so I keep them in its box because I feel that these things sticking out are uh, a pain at least for me when I try to put my camera away in my backpack or in my bag and I don't really like them. I feel that using it like this is more smooth and way better than with this screw because it really is a screw with a very big head, more exactly a thumb screw. And this one right here in the bag is in there in case you lose the first one. So let's put everything aside and let's take a closer look at this filter. This one right here is the 82mm size because both my lenses have a 82mm filter thread and I always recommend even though your lens has a smaller filter thread to get the 82mm and adapt it because you never know when you will get another lens which will have a bigger thread and this will uh, make the filter unusable with it. So yeah, better have the bigger size because you will also can't use your uh, lens hood anymore because the filter is pretty thick 
yeah, this might be a downside. But coming back to the filter, we have a black dot right here, which indicates the current value that the filter is set to. And the filter starts at one because it is from one to five stops of uh, light reduction. The biggest step right here is from one to two. There isn't any hard stop at two, three, four, but there is one on five because the filter doesn't let you go past five or past one. This is to prevent the X uh, pattern that will appear on the image and it will uh, make your image good for a recycle bin. Pretty nice thing that the filter stops and uh, it uh, allows you to get out of it the best image quality possible. There's nothing crazy about this filter, it's really easy to use, you just spin it around, adjust your uh, brightness, let's say, and that's it. And if I am not uh, needing any ND or light reduction, when I'm taking my shot, I keep the filter on the minimum, on one, and right here it takes away just one stop of light and this isn't too much. And here in the studio, I can always compensate by turning a bit uh, more the light and um, yeah, everything is fine. But even outside in low light conditions, this one stop of light reduction doesn't mean that much when you are using an A7 IV or an A7S III or pretty much any camera that was released in the past four years because from Sony, at least, the cameras are pretty amazing when it comes to low light performance, the full frame ones. I didn't got yet to test the crop sensor cameras like the A6700 or FX30 or the new ZV-E10 Mark II, but maybe I will test them in the future, who knows. So let's talk about the pros of this filter right here and I will start with vignetting. There is little to none vignetting that shows up on your image when using this filter because again it doesn't allow you to go past the minimum or the maximum point when adjusting. There is no X pattern that shows up on your image from 1 to 5. There is little to none image degradation or color shift or contrast loss. Okay, if you pixel peep for sure you will find some differences with or without the filter, but in the real world use, when you are vlogging, taking out your footage from your camera and start editing it, there will not be anything that will pop to your eyes that will say the image sucks because you used this filter. And another pro for this filter is the price, which is not the cheapest price on the market, but it is not the most expensive filter also. So this right here, might be in the middle when it comes to the price and I've got it for under $180 I think. So it is not that bad comparing to the Polar Pro filters, the Peter McKinnon ones and so on. The fact that I've bought it twice I think says a lot about this product. Of course there are way cheaper alternatives like the KNF filters but you might see there some color shifting or maybe some sharpness loss. But if you are not using your filter uh, every day, every time, in any situation like me, of course I recommend you to buy the cheapest version. Maybe this one, it is not worth it if you use it like once a month or maybe a lot less than that. So now let's talk about the cons. Of course, my first con will be that with this filter you cannot use anymore your lens hood. and Usually I was using my lens hood with all my lenses, uh, but now I realize that I forgot about something, about this. This is a cap that comes with the filter and will allow you to put the cap onto your lens right here. And um, now you cannot scratch the lens or the filter. Yeah, the filter. If you wanna use your lens hood, uh, it is impossible. <laughs> At least with the 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 uh, Mark II from Sony, it is impossible. And I should definitely test this with the Sigma 24 to 70. So this huge 
lens hood is the one for the 24 to 70 and as you can see it doesn't fit yeah i was correct the filter is pretty thick and this allows it to have less vignetting on your lens because if you wanna use two stacked filters this one on top of another filter you will get vignetting. This might not be an issue with the filter, but more of an issue of the wider focal distances like under 18 millimeters. when if you will stack this filter on top of a protector filter, let's say you will get vignetting. Of course, you can solve this issue by activating the stabilization mode on your uh, Sony camera, if you have a Sony camera and uh, selecting the active one the active mode which will crop into the image and the vignetting will disappear but this is why i choose to use only my nd filter on top of my lens and nothing more because i'm not using the active mode for the stabilization every time and the camera's display doesn't help me that much right now because i wanted to test something but i will tell you from my memory that if you are filming on the wide end on 16 millimeter and you have the standard stabilization mode uh, selected on your sony camera you might see some vignetting but very 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 little and of course you can easily correct it on post and another con for this filter is that even though it is this thick and this wide it doesn't have any internal mechanism that will allow you to change the polarization of the image. But for this one, I have a bonus tip. So you just need to unscrew a bit the filter because the variable ND filter is practically two stacked pieces of polarized glass that you rotate and this way the image darkens or, or the glass darkens and uh, the light input uh, goes lower so if you just unscrew a bit the filter and play with it you can get rid of a lot of reflections just like with a uh, circular polarizer and then after you have took the shot you just screw the filter back on i do this every time here in the studio when i want to film product b-roll or even when i go outside to take some photos and i shoot let's say cars or windows, street photography in general. So yeah, this is a pretty useful tip. So if a friend comes to ask me what variable ND filter should he get, will this Nisi be my recommendation for him? Of course, yes, but get it in 82 millimeters because it will be a lot more versatile and get some step up rings for your lens, which are very, very cheap, like one or two bucks and adapt the filter onto your lens because you never know when you will upgrade your gear and maybe your next lens will be uh, wider when it comes to the filter thread and if you get the smaller filter you will not be able to use it another advantage right here if you use the filter with a smaller lens is that the vignetting chance is a lot smaller and uh, your image will look even better and also there isn't any reason to get the smaller filter because the lens hood will become unusable and the lens cap might become unusable too because the edge on this filter isn't that big for the lens cap to hold on to so this comes in really handy the filter cap that comes with it and honestly it is way better than a lens cap that you need to uh, squeeze to get out or put on. It is uh, a lot more simpler. Okay, but what if you use a smaller lens and you don't plan to change anything in your photo video setup, like a 67mm filter thread lens? In this case, of course, you can get the 67mm filter to have your setup a small and compact as you can. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Flash out.